Welcome back. Now, the curtain comes down on this year's Six Nations Championship this weekend. But the million dollar question is, who will get the bragging rights? And uh, you have to say that the sentimental pick is uh, Ireland and uh, Odrisco. Uh, do you see him uh, having this grand, you know, send off? Um, I or, think or, he, had or, a, he already had a grand send off last week, yeah. I think, uh, playing his last game in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, this one will be in France. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how grand that will be because there'll be more Frenchmen than Irishmen there. <laughs> uh, but it would be a great, a great way for him to go if they could win it in yeah. his last year. Yeah. Uh, I see the French reigning on that party. Yeah. Uh, they've been under so much pressure. And when the French are under pressure, they sort of tend to turn, turn it around. Yeah. As to whether they can do it so soon after that debacle we saw against Scotland, I think Scotland gave them that game, yeah. uh, is, a, is another matter. Yes. And I think the moment might overtake Ireland. Yeah. That's the thing. When it's too sentimental, sometimes yeah. it, it falls off the tracks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Philip, getting back to France there, mm -hmm. um, David kind of uh, hinted <coughs> at it, you know, the, the, the side is in turmoil, it's in disarray. We, yeah. We've had Nicolas Mas uh, <laughs> stopping out of uh, a press conference. What's happening there? I mean, after you have the coach suspending uh, Pickamoles, yeah. the number eight, then you have Mas storming out of a press conference because yeah. of questions to do with the new scrummaging format. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, well, the French have always had their tempers, but like David said, they will always blow things out of proportion. Yeah. And I think it's going to come and haunt them. You're going into a game against Ireland. Yeah. Ireland has come off a very convincing, nice win against Italy. Yeah. It's, it's, you don't want to go in there with problems. Already those are two unsettled players in a squad. Yeah. So the French, I think, have made it hard on themselves in a way. Okay. Yeah. No such problems for England. Um, they won the Triple Crown last weekend. Yeah. And... Um, um, from the looks of it, you know, they are favorites, you know, to, to w uh, win the Six Nations title this weekend. But uh, they, they have one or two hurdles, you know, to jump. First of all, the fixtures have been staggered. Uh, mm -hmm. Ireland will pr play France after knowing, you know, the result <laughs> from uh, yeah. the game yeah. between England and Italy. Do you th see this, you know, stopping the English? No, I think the English have said it. They are just going to do their job yeah. uh, and let the rest take care of itself. And secretly, they'll know that the French will want to ruin the Irish party. So I don't think Ireland, England are under any pressure. Mm -hmm. They won quite comfortably against Wales. And yeah. I think that was quite convincing. Very good kicking from the fly half uh, Farrell. Yeah. Uh, number 13 barrel was all over the Wales. The, yeah. the Wales uh, center, Jonathan Davis. The yeah. pack was dominant. And, and they seem like a well-settled side. Yeah. I think for me, that's, that's, that's what's most threatening about England. They look yeah. well settled. They're not getting, letting the power get to their heads, as we all know, with England side. Yeah. They'd be talking about the next World Cup and all that. But they've kept it really level-headed. And I think that's the testament of the coach. Um, I forget his name. Stuart Lancaster. Yeah, Stuart Lancaster. He's a very level-headed man. Yeah. And I think that's what he's brought to the team. A mixture of youth and a bit of experience, but really level-headed. So they say they're going to do the job in Italy, and yeah, that's what they all need to do. Okay. Time for your Twitter responses. That, of course, you sent through using uh, the hashtag uh, rock and roll. Uh, I'll start with uh, one here from uh, Benjamin Mugabe. He says he hopes uh, Ireland can pull it off and win uh, the Six Nations for Drisco. We've discussed that extensively. Uh, we also have another Mugabe called Jude, who reckons Namiliango will bounce back. He adds, uh, if they make it to the semis and final, Pedigree will rule the day. Uh, <laughs> do you agree with that, Jude? Uh, David, I know you... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm I, was, I, was, I was the biggest yeah. critic of Namiliango yeah. last week. And, uh, and you won yourself a few enemy. <laughs> 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 they, they came out, they came right uh, <laughs> uh, when, uh, against all expectations in SMAC. Yeah. And uh, pedigree definitely does help. Yeah. And I think they showed what, what they can do. Someone said form is permanent. What is it? Class mm. is permanent, form Class is temporary. Yeah, temporary. Yeah, 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 whatever that means. Yeah. Um, and so, but I think for me, in the semis and quarters, um, Robert Seguia also says it. That's yeah. where the game is won. It doesn't matter what you do yeah, if you get to the yeah. semis and finals. Yeah. Um, will they make it? I think it will be a bigger test. But definitely if they win, as an OB, I'll be excited. Mm -hmm. As to whether they can do it is another matter. Okay. Yeah. Finally, here, Uganda's answer to Odrisco by uh, Timothy Mudola, who is an avid uh, viewer of this program. He writes, and I quote, I hear complaints from Hannah and uh, London College that Kololo Senior Secondary School is using City High students. How true is this, uh, Philip? Uh, 
we might we might want to know where he had it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but to be fair to Timothy, it's good he asked. Uh, yeah. I I tried uh, myself. I had it in the grapevine. Yeah. And when I asked Kasasa, Kasasa said, look, I've also had it in the grapevine. He's mm -hmm. handling schools rugby at the union. Yeah. He says there's been no formal complaint so far. Yeah. There's been no formal communication, though he says we are looking into it. Yeah. But it's, it's really more of still a rumor at the moment. There's nothing really Concrete, solid to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, to end the show, we are off to Insanji, where Hannah mixed her best. A double over Chambogo College that has seen Hannah score a combined 95 points has marked them out as the team to beat in the school's rugby league. We've been to find out from the school's coach, Robert Seguia, if things are indeed prim and proper. Uh, Hannah started uh, playing rugby four years ago. Um, I started with them. The first year didn't go well because starting uh, a new sport in a new school that is literally not known among giant schools, the traditional rugby playing schools, Namiriango, Chisubibudo. So it was really hard for me. The, the school administration and the, and the students believed in me. They knew me. They wanted actually to, to see the sogi they hear and they talk about. So when I came here, they welcomed me. The, the attitude, the students gave me, they were welcoming, they wanted to learn a new sport that was largely being talked about in the country. And then Chadondo, where I come from, supported them so much, giving them equipment, also pushing me here as a coach. And uh, Hannah, the school, also helped the disadvantaged boys from Chadondo. We have very many students here on Basali, some are at university, and they are really doing well. Sports can coexist with education. That one, no doubt. Other people literally say, work without play it makes a dull boy. Yeah, I will be dull if I, if I don't play. Even if you have a son or a daughter and you see always reading books, there's a problem. There's time for play. So you see, even intelligent people, they have time. Doctors have time to play. People just pretend that they don't want to play. They're actually, in their hearts, they know they must play. Budo, Namiriango, Smak. Um, what I think the problem is, they don't, unlike the past years, they don't look at sports so keenly, I would say. Philip went, we got another person. Others are going, others are coming in. We are, even in Hana, we have better Philips than the Philip who, who is at Chadondo. We have better Bijiks than the Bijik. Bijik even has a brother here, who, for me, in my place. I play with him in Buffaloes, but the young brother is better. One thing, they should, they should look after themselves. They should look after themselves. They should know that smoking is bad drinking is bad and they should stay safe. Robert Seguia they are sounding as competitive as ever. Uh, people expected Hannah to, to crack, to crumble after they, they, they lost the likes of uh, Philip Wokrach, Philip Pario and uh, Alfred Bijik. You know, th th these guys moved over to university. Uh, I think most of them are at uh, UCU Mukono. But Hannah is still there, you know, packing a punch, aren't they? Yes, they are. And I think... Um it's a testament to what their intentions are in terms of their structures. Yeah. Uh, they continue to offer scholarships to boys from Chadondo. Yeah. Uh, they've kept Robert Seguia as coach. Yeah. So they, they're, they're taking care of the, all the things that ensure continuity of the game. Yeah. So they, even the way they, are, they, 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 they choose the boys they're looking for. So now they're looking for forwards. Yeah. Um, uh, and Robert will tell you that as well. Yeah. So I think that allows for the continuity. And the players that with class like Philip and Alfred Bijik yeah. then pass on that belief. And you see, it's not two years. Before you know it, they'll be the Namiliango of the future. So that everyone, even that aura, they'll create that aura yeah. that they're yet to create. I mean, they have won about twice. Yeah. And people still don't give them the respect. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Everyone people say, Hannah, ah, who's that? Yeah. But with time and um, with dedicated people like Robert, uh, the headmaster of Hannah himself is a b huge, huge fan of the, of, of the game. Yeah. Uh, he attends every game. Uh, he makes sure the scholarships are there. He takes care of selections in terms of not selections on the day, yeah. but yeah. which players come in, what type of players do they need. Yeah. He's that close to the team. I think that 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 sinks the, the message around what they intend to do with this game and where they think the game can take them. Yeah, and uh, that neat link, I know you've uh, hinted at it, you know, be between uh, Hana and Chadon and uh, Chadondo Rugby Football Club. Mm -hmm. They offer eight bursaries uh, uh, there for, for students in Hana. Yes. And uh, it's, it's, it's given them a head start, hasn't it? Yes, it, it, it has given them a head start. That's very true. Yeah. But remember, we were mentioning sports, I think, in the previous show, yeah, and, and how vital sport is to education. Yeah. And, and Hannah, I'm sure the headmaster looked at it, and he said, how best do I put Hannah out there? Yeah. It's a win-win. He's giving scholarships. These yeah. boys get to study. I mean, we've seen them now in university, Philip and, uh, and uh, Alfred, Alfred, Alfred at yeah. UCU. Yeah. Pario, I think, is at, uh, okay. at, at Makerere. Makerere. Yeah. And, and these are boys who didn't have tuition. I mean, at the end of the day, the yeah. scholarships came in handy. Yeah. But also the school has been exposed. How yeah. many knew Hannah before this? No one. In no a one. way, many didn't. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, I think it's good for the game. It's good for the students. Yeah. And it's also good for the school. Yeah. And uh, Muzei Sogi, one of your former teammates, what exactly <laughs> does he bring to the table? Uh, Muzei is one of the most competitive people I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think if he was losing, yeah. he would go to the level of cheating. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I would say that he has to win. Yes, he has to win no matter what. He has to win no matter what. But I think yeah. he's a fair guy, yeah. uh, plays tough, yeah. demands the same of the players. So the players will know that with Sogi, there is no joking. He'll bring discipline to the team. And I, that's the discipline we're talking about that players get from playing rugby. Yeah. He'll bring that discipline around doing the hard work before the game, yeah. playing for each other, yeah. making the little things work. And I think uh, it's something that he exemplified as a player. Yeah. Sometimes very annoying. He'll do things the way he thinks he should be done, but he'll do them. And, uh, and I think that's, that's the same thing that, that, uh, that he brings to Hannah. And he has uh, a good rugby uh, brain, I should say. You know, he's, he's a player who has, uh, over the years, evolved. We have been talking about Odrisco and his durability, but this is also a perfect example here in Uganda of someone who has stayed the course and has evolved, started out as a great kicker. Somehow, you know, uh, he lost uh, <laughs> the, the energy, you know, yeah. for, for, for obvious reasons. And, and he, he still kept there, you know, with, with the big boys. Definitely. He has a, a huge love for the game. Yeah. And uh, someone said that uh, when Sogi dies, God forbid, he should be buried, <laughs> he should be buried at Kololo. <laughs> 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 I, I think yeah. he's uh, Uganda's most remarkable player. Yeah. In terms of his contribution, in terms of his effort, in terms of, as you said, his ability to regenerate yeah. uh, and, and stay, uh, you know, stay in power. Yeah. Uh, when the bigger boys have come in, I mean, he has been on the wrong end of some huge hits from younger players, yeah. but he still comes back yeah. and, and proves them wrong. I, he has rescued a couple of games for Uganda when there was nothing going on against Kenya. Yeah. Um, I think he's done it all from sevens to fifteens yeah. with the club and country, and he's also part of the transformation at Buffalo. So yeah. definitely one of those that, as I said, if they buried him at Kololo, I'd, I'd say well worth it. <laughs> <laughs> we love to leave it at that. Uh, thank you for watching. From the three of us, it is goodbye.